Uh, my friends call me Terry. Uh, I guess professionally, Dr. Tao is fine. All uh, right, amazing. Okay. So Dr. Tao, what first drew you to math? Uh, so I've always liked math as long as I can remember. Uh, my parents told me uh, when I was two, I, I don't remember this myself, but they said that when, when I was two, they, they found me at a friend's place um, trying to teach some older kids, like maybe like five or six, how to count um, oh. uh, using these number blocks. Mm -hmm. um, and they asked me uh, uh, how I, where I learned this because they hadn't taught me how. They said, apparently I learned it from watching Sesame Street. Uh -huh. um, so um, I don't remember that. Um, the earliest memory I have that's math related was when I was maybe about three or four. Um, my grandmother was washing the windows um, mm -hmm. in, um, uh, in my house and um, I asked her to put the detergent on the um, windows in the shape of numbers. So I you know, put, you do a three, do a four. So I always like numbers and patterns and games, uh, puzzles, and these sort of things. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't know until a lot um, later that uh, that the, I was actually useful for something. I, I just enjoyed <laughs> I, I enjoyed doing math. Um, my parents, you know, when I was restless, uh, like when I was seven or eight, if if I was too noisy at night, they would give me a math workbook, and oh. I would just go and and and, and do all the uh, sums and and products and uh, long division. <laughs> um, I just liked. Uh, working of numbers that's very interesting so is there someone you would owe your mathematical talent to uh so my mother was a, a high school math teacher so she was the first person who taught me um some maths um mm -hmm. later on um so of course i, I had some very good uh, teachers in in high school um I, uh, actually, my, my physics teacher in high school was 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 uh, uh, was a, a lot of fun, actually. Um, but there was a, a retired um, math professor uh, in my in my hometown. Um, mm -hmm. So when I was around ten or eleven, uh, my parents would take me there, um, and uh, uh, um, on Sundays we would just have tea with cookies, and he would just talk about um, some math puzzles he had come up with, or he'd talk about uh, the math he'd used. He he fought in the war, World War Two. Um, oh. And uh, you know he did ballistics and things like that, and uh, uh -huh. so um, you know, it was just nice to see maths out of a uh, outside of a, uh, a school environment. Um, I sort of did a lot of uh, math competitions, uh, these Olympiads. Um, oh, and, yeah, and That's those amazing. were a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, so, as a teenager, what did you want to be? Um, so I didn't know for the uh, longest time that actually you could you could be a mathematician. I, I didn't realize that this was a job. Um, so when people asked me what I wanted to do, I thought about it. Uh, I said maybe a shopkeeper because you know I have to you know do all these sums to to balance the books and this I, I think I know how to do. Um, I really had no idea what what maths was used for. Um, oh, so that's, it was a, that's very interesting. Like you would do anything to just do math. You would become anything just to do the math, right? Um, well, I, that was what I was good at, you know, I've, I've yeah. never been any good at sports or, or singing or acting or anything. So, um, yeah, I, I had no idea, but, but I had very good advisors. So my, my, uh, undergraduate, uh, uh, advisor when I was in, in, um, at my undergraduate college adv advised me to go study abroad. And so I, I went to, um, uh, the U S to study in Princeton uh, mm -hmm. and then my PhD advisor, you know, I was thinking of just going back back to um, Australia and uh, actually I wasn't really thinking about what to do, but, but, uh, but he strongly recommended that I I'd also apply internationally. Uh, oh. and I got a job at UCLA. That's uh, amazing. And I've, yeah. And I've been there ever <laughs> since. I really, really like it here. <laughs> okay. So what advice would you give to teenagers that are interested in STEM and math? Uh, well, um, uh, in some ways, it's a great time to uh, to be interested because there's so many resources now. Um, you know, the the internet has got so many uh, videos and 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 web pages, and even Wikipedia is is excellent. You know, when when I was growing up, you know, basically it was your local library, and if you're lucky, uh, some retired math professor you could talk to. Um, but but now, you know, there's, there's, there are these internet communities, so um, and it's 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 a lot easier, I think, especially in the developing world. Um, to, uh, to catch up, um, if you want to do research level mathematics, um, it used to be that you have to go to a top university because there were certain um, latest developments that you could only get by talking to certain people in certain universities. Yeah. Um, but, but, but now you can just go online and you, know, you, can, you can Zoom like we're Zooming now. Um, so um, there's, there's a lot of opportunity, um, but uh, uh, you have to be motivated. I mean, uh, you know, so the internet has got all these resources, but but uh, you can't just you know you have to actually go look for them. Uh, yeah. So 
you need uh, to find your passion. Um, and uh, uh, usually it starts with uh, a really good teacher uh, who somehow gets you on the, on the right path, finds you, uh, find, matches you with, with something that you really like doing. Mm -hmm. So what's by far the coolest thing you've learned in maths? Anything I've learned? Uh, huh. um, that's a funny thing because um, the thing about math is it's it's like um, kind of like a crossword puzzle. You know, like um, if if you work very hard on a crossword puzzle, there's this clue and you have no idea what uh, what the answer is, and and uh, you think the answer must be something really clever and 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 and, and sophisticated. But when you when you find it, it, it's usually just obvious. Oh, why didn't I think of that sooner? <laughs> um, so every idea, you know, I mean, it's it's sort of. Uh, it may be surprising at the time, but it becomes obvious after a while. I mean, just to give one very simple example, you know, I mean, the, the, the concept of, of zero, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the number zero, right? It was, uh, um, it was only invented in what, in what the, uh, the first millennium, okay, by, by the, um, actually by the Indians and, and the, the Arabs. Um, and before then, they didn't have a concept of zero, you know, so, um, you know, the, the Romans uh, only knew how to come from one forward. They didn't have zero, didn't have negative numbers. Um, and it was a big sort of psychological uh, trick that you can think about more numbers than just the numbers you can count in your fingers. It's zero and the negative, ne negative numbers and then fractions and complex numbers. And, and in math, there's so many abstract objects now that are just sort of massive generalizations of, of things like numbers and shapes. And so they're very basic concepts that have become extremely abstract. But once you are familiar with them, they're, they're not so such a big deal anymore. You know, like, like zero is, 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 zero is just zero. Like it's, it's, it's nothing, um, you know, it's no big deal. Um, yeah, that's understandable. So what's one thing no one knows about your relationship with math? Uh, no one knows, I don't know. Um, I mean, it's, you know, it's just as hard for me as it is for everybody else, you know? So um, the, the thing about math research is that you, you work on various problems and, and sometimes you solve them, sometimes you don't, uh, but you only publish the ones that you solve. So mm -hmm. if you only read the publications of somebody, it, it looks like they do, they do nothing, but they're always winning. You know, that, that, uh, it's like uh, you know, everyone is, uh, I don't know, Sachin Tendulkar or something. They're always batting, you know, 100 perfectly. <laughs> um, but uh, um, but it, what actually happens is, is that it is hit and miss. I mean, there's, there's lots of things I've tried. And it doesn't work. Um, but I don't, sh I don't share this, you know, these things often with people. Um, there were a couple of times where I've run some math research projects on the internet. There are these collaborative um, math research projects called, called polymath projects where you get a whole bunch of people. Um, it's open. It's completely open. Anyone can join. Um, and everyone, um, there's a single math problem and, and everyone just throws out ideas and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Uh, and then someone says, oh, that idea doesn't work, but you inspired me to, to try this thing and this seems to make, make more progress. And bit by bit, you, you work on solving the problem. Um, and I've participated in a couple of these, a couple of these, a lot of fun. Um, but um, when you do those, you, uh, you show everything. So you, you show all, of, all the things that work and all the things that don't work. Um, yeah. And, um, the feedback I've gotten when, um, when we, these projects ended uh, is like uh, graduate students, when they follow these projects, they, they, were, uh, they were amazed to learn that even like senior mathematicians, when they work on a problem, they make just as many mistakes and, and, and sort of wrong turns as, 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 as they do. Uh, just, so when you're more experienced, you are um, much better at um, finding out that you made a wrong turn and fixing it sooner. Um, and, and also um, learning how to change it, uh, how to how to like, extracting the parts that did work and mm -hmm. and incorporating that in, into into uh, some better argument. But we still make lots of mis lots of mistakes. Um, yeah. So that's something nobody knows about you that you also make mistakes. Um, well, not okay. Uh, anyone who's actually worked with me knows that. Okay, and my wife certainly knows that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I think um, like if, if it's someone that's only like read my papers or has only read about me or something, they may not. Uh, uh, All right. Like so, what topic do you dislike in math, and why? I dislike. Um, well, there's certainly parts of math I'm not good at. Um, so there are areas of math like like topology, which um, I struggle with. Um, and if I, well, I mean, yeah, I. I uh, um, I can force myself to use certain areas of math I don't like if I have to. Um, 
sometimes math can get very messy. Um, so this is, sometimes the only way to solve a problem is just to divide it up into like 20 cases and just check off each case one by one. Um, and you have to do it because you want the problem solved, but it's, it's, it's messy and disgusting. Um, but, um, well, sometimes this motivates you to find a better way to do it. Um, or sometimes it motivates somebody else uh, to clean it up. Um, you know, actually, it's actually a really good feeling when, when you work really hard on a problem and then somebody else finds a much better way to do it. Okay, and you know, they, they, um, you know, they, they cite you, of course, but it, 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 it actually makes you feel better that you know, you, all, all this time you were spending, actually, you realize you, it wasn't actually uh, the right way to do it. Um, but I, I don't know, there's, there's no piece of math I really hate. Uh, I mean, there's, 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 there's parts that are tedious. Um, and, you know, and even the parts I don't like, I can often work with somebody who likes that parts more. So, you know, often you collaborate. So math these days is very collaborative. Uh, almost every project I do is joint with somebody else. Um, and uh, often you have complementary skills. So, you know, if, if you don't like one part of math, uh, the other person will, will be happy to, to <laughs> take care of that part for you. All right. So could you give us a broad overview of your work? Um, okay. So, um, I work in a lot of areas of mathematics, but uh, the, the general field I work in is analysis. Um, I guess the, uh, um, well, okay, well, what I actually work in changes from year to year. Um, I get interested in different things. Um, so um, in the past few years, I've been very interested in, in number theory, um, studying things like the primes. Uh, I've, I've always been interested in, in the prime numbers, trying to find new, uh, um, so the prime numbers are supposed to be distributed very, very randomly in various ways. Um, mm. And I'm trying to find ways to, to make that precise. Um, and it, it's tough. The, the primes are a very stubborn beast to control. I mean, we, 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 th we think we know what they should be doing, but it's very hard to actually prove anything about them. Um, I've played a lot recently with fluid equations, uh, the equations that govern things like water. Um, I'm trying to construct special solutions to these equations that do funny things. I want to make water do tricks, uh, okay, like you know, make them sort of blow up or something. Um, but um, yeah, I play different things all the time. So like right now I'm working on a problem in an, an area called complex analysis, which I got interested in because I was teaching a class on it uh, this quarter. And so I started learning about some, some problems in this area and I got interested in them. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the great thing about being a pure mathematician is, is that you can pick the problems you work on. Uh, you just follow what looks interesting, what, what looks like it's, it's promising. Um, it's a bit like fishing, you know, you, um, you don't know exactly what fish you, you, you'll get, but you know, there are certain parts of the river where, where you, uh, they, it looks like there's a lot of fish in there. So if you cast a, a line and you, and you wait, you should get something. Um, and, it, and if it doesn't work, you go to a different part of the river and you try there instead. Um, That's a very interesting analogy. Yeah. Uh, so, what's your favorite movie or TV show, or and why? My favorite movie, um, actually, it's kind of a silly one. It's uh, um, it's called Galaxy Quest. Um, okay. So, uh, so there are these, it's a it's sort of an homage to these uh, Star Trek movies. Okay, so you know, Star Trek is of course is this huge phenomenon, and the, um, there are all these uh, Star Trek fans called Trekkies who are very obsessed about every little detail of Star Trek. Um, and so um, Galaxy Quest is this comedy. It's, it's, it's about these actors who are acting in um, something like Star Trek, it's their version of Star Trek. Um, but they get kidnapped by aliens who believe they actually are sort of starship captains and so forth. And because they need, they, they, um, the aliens are trying to recruit them to fight some other aliens. Um, and it, it's, it's just a hilarious movie. Um, and so it's, it's a satire or parody of Star Trek, but it's, it's, it's so... Um, uh, uh, it's a very loving parody. I mean, they, they, uh, it's, it's clear that the, um, the people who wrote this, this movie are big, very big fans of Star Trek. So, so even though they make fun of every single sort of cliche in, in those movies, uh, they actually make it anyways, they make a better Star Trek movie than the actual Star Trek movies. So like, if, if you look at rankings of like the top, the top 10 Star Trek movies, Galaxy Quest is normally up there in, like in the top five. They just consider like an honorary Star Trek movie. Anyway, uh, that's my favorite movie. So you and you aren't a Star Trek fan? Uh, I like Star Trek. I mean, I, I know people who are really, really into Star Trek. Um, so I mean, I, I, knew, I know that I can recognize what they're parodying. Um, so I mean, the, the normal Star Trek movies are, are okay, but this particular movie was just, it's just really nice. It's got really great actors too, you know, Alan Rickman and Sigourney Weaver. And oh, wow. I'll check that out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you help your kids with their math homework? 
Um, sometimes, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, um, so they actually are often they to embarrassed to talk to me sometimes. So we have a math tutor as well. Uh, but yeah, my son William, um, he's he's um, eighteen. He's uh, he's taking these machine learning classes and, and so forth, and he's he's applying for college and and uh, he's got a math research project. He bounces some ideas off me sometimes. Um, yeah, and my daughter is uh, is nine, and so she's doing like long division and so forth. And yes, yeah, so sometimes I, um, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I can try to help turn a math problem into into some sort of uh, fun puzzle for her. You know, like like she has this pet bunny that she she adores. So um, you know, like if you can turn a division problem into like you know you have to feed three bunnies using so many pellets or something like that. So she can. Uh, it's 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 easier for her to 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 to. Uh, uh, She's not as afraid of of uh, of fast if you present it in in a in a in a very lighthearted way. Um, Understandable. Uh, and finally, do you connect with people through social media? Um, a little bit, uh, mostly through my blog. Um, that's the one social media uh, I do use. I don't really use Facebook, Twitter. I mean, I I have accounts, but I never, I never basically uh, log into them. Um, yeah, I like the blog because um, you, you can write very um, detailed um, uh, mathematics on there. So it's mostly a work blog. Um, yeah, I don't really share personal stuff. You know, I, I don't show what I had for breakfast or something. I, I don't do Instagram. Um, some some mathematicians do actually. I mean, I, I mean, so I, it's great that there are some mathematicians out there who are showing on social media that they're just normal people. You know, they do the same things that everyone else does. You know, they cook, they climb, they surf. You know, they. And they have kids, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mostly just use uh, social media for, for, for my professional work. Uh, oh. Yeah. And what do you enjoy doing in your free time? Um, well, I have two kids. Um, I don't have that much free time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, watch movies. I don't know. Um, I used to play a lot of computer games, but I don't have time for that in, in, anymore. So uh, I, I want to play a little bit. I've been teaching myself some languages. Um, so this is an app called Duolingo yeah. um, that I've used to uh, taught myself Spanish uh, and I'm currently teaching myself Hebrew from it. Um, so can you yeah. speak a bit of Spanish for us? Um, solo un poco, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, you know, hablo español bien. Uh, yeah, it's not that great. Um, I mostly did, my, my, actually my daughter is more fluent in Spanish than I did because she was in a dual language program. So I, I learned Spanish so that um, I could speak with her a little bit. Um, uh, also, our, house, our housekeepers speak Spanish. Um, and in Los Angeles, actually, like half the signs are in Spanish anyway, so it's actually useful. Um, and Hebrew, it's, I have some friends who are Israeli. I wanted to surprise them. I, my, my, I had a friend who had a 70th birthday, um, and we were videotaping a little birthday congratulations. So I, I sent mine in, in Hebrew. Uh, oh, so like, that's so sweet. Yeah. That's very sweet. Uh, so uh, that concludes our interview. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time. And no it was problem. great okay. fun interacting with you. Yes, okay. okay. Cheers. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank okay. you. Bye. -bye.